My fellow Keterians, I come before you today with a heavy heart and the most heinous of news. Yesterday, shortly after curbling our base defenses at Green Peaks, the monsters of Yoffrey's legions attacked in an unprovoked and unethical display of aggression. Our brave COVID units defended to their last, but the suicidal tactics of the legion were sorely underestimated. And uh, also, we may have set our guns up wrong. Barrage is set to uh, on by default, and this meant that our guns could only fire one at a time. Because of the mishandling of this situation, our missile point defense was not fit for purpose when the second wave arrived and Green Peaks did fall. Joffrey's Legion took control. You'll be pleased to know that last night we began our very ethical and totally non-punishment debriefing with the engineers in charge of gun control. This may take some time. Not satisfied with destroying one base and the innocents that resided there, Joffrey's Legion then mounted an attack on Evercrest. The Kerbals operating vehicles of internal defence stood their ground and even crippled with malfunctioning guns managed to bring their rampage to an end. Full details can be found in your free propaganda linked down below. And so a response must be formulated. A loss of a base is an unacceptable loss. Having committed most of my air points to a single heavy plane with a top secret mission that we will return to later, we will not be responding by air, but rather by ground. The Grub, our instrument of ground-based retribution, has been equipped with two howitzer cannons up front for full frontal annihilation. M230 chain guns for all-round missile defense backed up with a sprinkling of countermeasures, of course retractable stabilizing side wheels and drive provided by two different types of track, of course a jet engine for troublesome inclines. Now the game rules say that I could just very easily use Vessel Mover to take this over to my position of attack, but I am not about that life as you guys are fully aware. I like I, th I think like might be a little bit strong but I enjoy I think that it's better if I drive my tanks across such terrain uh, I, as I say I don't I don't particularly enjoy this but I think it covers a much better video but of course such uh, activities are fraught with a danger one of these dangers is generally trying to get the shot if you will uh, trying to get a, a really good angle as you can see I'm trying to get a good angle on my uh, on my descent here and unfortunately I noticed that I've, uh, I've I've missed a little bit you can see that I wanted the plateau up the top there and I wanted to go left so I'm gonna try and jump my uh, my craft here up and over the edge unfortunately it all goes wrong I roll over and uh, blow up a few bits of armor I'm assuming here now this might be a big assumption, going off what has been talked about in the Discord, most people are probably going to be absolutely fine with this because, you know, it's not actually part of the fighting and stuff. But I have done a, um, a quick save, quick load at the top of the slope there. Now I feel kind of dirty going through and doing a quick save, quick load because, you know, this is, this is a competition. And I would not be doing this if I was even within 100 kilometers of my attack site because at that point it actually becomes like vessel versus vessel. But at the moment, Moment, it is uh, Camblin Kerbin versus the Mountain, which is not part of the competition. If you want to have a discussion about this, do let me know in the comments. I am totally up for having a discussion because, as I say, I would actually feel a little bit unsure about this play myself. If I was watching this, I'd be like, whoa, you didn't drive that all the way without blowing it up? I did drive it all the way, but I did also blow it up. So, uh, I mean, how you want to interpret that is entirely down to you. Right, here we go for one of the big climbs of the mountains. We are trying to get up and over this slope. I'm trying my best to not actually use uh, any of my jet fuel, mainly because I don't know how far we've got to go. I know Evercrest is close. I know it's within the 300 kilometers that we're allowed to move our tanks uh, but I would like to save as much as possible as I was saying uh, mainly actually for the descent this jet engine on the back of here is uh, one of the ones that has a capability of doing reverse thrust which means when I'm going down a very very steep steep incline I can put this on reverse thrust I can fire up the engine to an absolute maximum and I can use its thrust to help me uh, not descend too quickly one of the big problems that I had trying to do this was of course picking up far far too much speed to be stable on my wheels going down slope funnily enough means that you carry on accelerating just more and more and more and more so uh, I really needed to figure out ways to stop it you will in fact if you're watching my cursor you'll notice that the ma majority of the time the only thing that I'm actually doing is tapping brake on and off to try and keep myself within a certain range to begin with up in the mountains here I was keeping myself trying to keep myself underneath 20 kilo uh, 20 meters per second or so uh, I was uh, when we were getting up to 20 here in the brake and when we get down to 15 turning the brake back off so now is the real trick of the mission or at least of this particular pathway 
So far, all we've really done is drive across the plateaus at the top of the mountain. And now we need to try and come down off of that higher area and try and get down to the low enough uh, low enough so that we can just start driving. Uh, one of the, the big problems that I have at the moment is the inclination of the of the land around us means that if I start going too fast, we lose a little bit of stability. And where I've only got one traction wheel up front, uh, I have a habit of rolling over and destroying myself. It all goes horribly wrong if we are not going uh, slow enough. So this is the steepest climb of the entire climb. I've got my engine on full reverse right here, uh, tapping my brake away. And you can still, that, still see that mostly I'm still gaining speed thankfully down the bottom here that becomes not a problem but you know what you know what i enjoyed that and i enjoyed that a great deal so i think maybe just maybe i might go back and do it again because it was late at this point i've been driving for about two hours or so and i was like i'm gonna save this i'm gonna reload it i'm gonna go and do that hardest part of the game all over again because i I actually did enjoy this one. Going down, taking something that is very obviously not really meant for big slopes. Let, let's have a look at this thing. It's a three-wheeled grub. It looks like, you know, an, an insect lava of some description. Not really built for uh, stable combat. So, yeah, I, I thought, hey, let's go give it another go. Why why not? Why not, indeed? Uh, and again, as I say, I just threw on that uh, engine on super high reverse thrust. As you can see, we are up at maximum throttle. It is not stopping me. Let, let's be honest here. It's not actually going to stop me. But it is good enough to uh, allow me to roll down a hill at this sort of incline, uh, going through and just, just uh, tapping the brake occasionally. The big problem that we had with the brake is if I broke too hard, uh, my back end is a lot heavier than my front end. So I had a habit of just like, sweeping out in front of me. I then had a small break to sleep, like literally me, myself. I went to bed and woke up the next day and decided to go for a little bit of a drive across the uh, the more flatter land here. This is the point where I started thinking that maybe actually some sort of ice simulation is being run on the mountains. Because by the time I get down to the bottom of this slope, I was saying earlier about how when I put my brakes on too hard, the back end had a habit of slipping around in front of me. Going down this slope, that was not really the case. The further I got down to more of the grey stuff, uh, the less slippage or back end coming out I, I experienced. Uh, if you go back and rewatch the footage, you can see that almost all the time I am trying my best to be facing directly downhill if we are going downhill and I'm using my brake. Uh, because that would be the direction to slot my, stop my back end slipping out. Uh, if I was facing directly downhill all my back end wanted to do was push into the into the back of my front as opposed to slipping side to side it's vector maths guys you should be able to figure it out if i've, if I've got even a slight bit of sideways component then that's gonna start to dominate when we are slipping down now i don't know about you but i feel like this drive is getting long and boring but there are a few things that i want to show you the first thing i want to show you is how slow this actually is this is a real-time rendition of how slow this is taking to drive across here i oh I, I don't even want to go into it guys it was long and the last thing i wish to show you from this epic journey across the surface of kerbin is a, a little bit of a bug a little bit of a mismatch you can see that my front wheel there seems to be going down underneath the ground and suddenly pop I get flipped over for, I say no apparent reason, for uh, geometry reasons. My tank got flipped over. Hope you'll forgive me for not just taking that on the chin because once again, I feel like this wasn't part of the competition. Wasn't actually part of the base intended game. Like I don't feel like we're supposed to be doing that when we drive across the surface of Kerbin. Uh, so yeah, I, I just wanted to be up front and tell you about it all. But after a little while, I noticed that I'm coming within 100 kilometers of my target. And then I remembered, wait, the game rules say I've got to go around and do my deployments before doing the attack. So let's go around and make sure I've got all my vehicles deployed. First step of deployment really should have actually been going around and making sure all the turtles have got barrage turned off. This actually took a lot longer than you would imagine because we were playing in Kerbal 1.4 and the loading screens. Oh, it's just, it's a real painful experience. This this uh, minute's worth of video literally took me an hour and a half to record. Not because it took a while to do anything with the turtles, but because of the loading time. The next thing I brought out was two of the new smaller class of ships that we're allowed to build. This is half the size of the Plessy and it's it's literally just a gunboat supp uh, gun support ship. As you can see, it's got uh, uh, 10. It's got 10 uh, M230 guns on the back of it. This is just so that it can provide enough 
bullet cover for Plessy that if there's any missiles coming at it, then these guys will shoot the missiles out of the sky, hopefully. Obviously, Plessy is almost entirely just a missile platform. It does have a goalkeeper on it, but that that's just more for anti-air defense, as in uh, an aircraft rather than missiles. This vessel, uh, without a name at the moment, suggestions gladly accepted. Uh, it's got some wonderful roll capabilities. You may have actually watched me uh, turn around and... Um, do a little barrel roll with it there. I, I think that's amazing. Not really intended, but it works out pretty well. Also using one of the hydro engines underneath. You can see the thing that looks like a shadow underneath my craft is actually uh, quite a large engine. I've used uh, tweak scale to bring the size of that engine down to about a third of its actual size, and it's still massively overpowered if I open up the throttle immediately and just go it will backflip thankfully if I build my way up to full power there's enough uh, SAS control there that we can keep pointing forwards all the way up to a massive 30 meters per second yeah that's right this thing this thing shifts uh, uh, which is still faster than Plessy can travel so you know that that's all good anyway that's my static deployments done and as for active deployment we have our Manta a heavy plane it's actually a bomber and a missile carrying platform uh, we're gonna come back to this as I said and now we return to the grub we've been traveling across the flat plains of Kerbin here for a little while in between Evercrest and Green Peaks Green Peaks of course just to remind you the base that I had stolen off me in between my turns so we're gonna go and try and have a very ethical discussion about how this uh, property theft thing really shouldn't be going down but I've got a few events to show you on the way across this green green plane uh, mostly it was an uneventful journey as you can imagine after coming out of the equivalent of the Kerbal Alps uh, I felt rather confident on the majority of the surfaces we were coming Coming across here but then I found myself on quite a steep incline and for some reason I didn't just immediately turn on my jet engine uh, don't ask me why I just didn't do it uh, and so I started playing around with the gear ratios on the back of the track there that generally works out actually very well but then something happened I decided to try and see if I could use the physics warp and no don't try and use your physics warp. I found myself on the side and I, I had a real sinking feeling in, in my soul at that point because I'd already promised myself up in the mountain that if I was going to quick save and reload that I wouldn't do it when in within range of a target. And look, there, there's a target over there. So I'm like... That's it. I've messed it up. I've, I've really destroyed my chances here already. I start by wiggling my landing gear in and out. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, and then I have the smart idea of trying to use my chain guns. And it kind of works. Uh, it works well enough anyway. I just continue rolling myself all the way over. For some reason, I couldn't get myself up on my wheels as I wanted to. Rolled all the way over, got stable, and very, very cautiously continued on my way up the hill. There is another event I wish to show you. It's another one of these strange translocation events. As you can see, I was driving for long enough that nighttime had started to settle in, and suddenly, BAM! There was a solid wall there. I, you're gonna have to just uh, accept that I really wanted to have the fight rather than succumb to a glitch. I, I hope Edgy would agree with me. In fact, I probably should have actually checked with him before just reloading and carrying on. So I wanted to show you those two pieces of footage because I wanted to show you the different types of scenarios that I would encounter and how I would respond to them. Things I would take responsibility for, my terrible driving and my control in general of the craft, and things that I wouldn't take uh, responsibility for, things like glitches. With that said, I want to show you things that I'm not going to let Edgy take responsibility for. As you can see, his tank has fallen through the building now, therefore is unable to take part in the combat and I can't even use Vessel Mover to put it back because for some reason it's classed as floating on the other building down there. I tried quick saving, quick reloading, I did a whole bunch of stuff to uh, to, to save the situation. Unfortunately, it just was unsalvageable. Now, I don't know when it happened, but at some point rather early on in my term, Edgy's uh, tank had dropped down. Uh, I am just going to have to bite the bullet and re reset to where we were using the various tools that we have for this very specific purpose here we got vessel mover and of course I make lots of saves all the all the way through because I know 
th- having previous experience that stuff like this happens. I think the last 20 kilometers definitely deserve a little bit of ra- ride along action going along. Most of the time it is just flat, boring driving. That's why I've sped this up literally as fast as I can actually play it uh, black- back to myself and still tell what's going on. Mostly flat terrain, as I've been saying, but we've been having a few hills to worry about. I think that maybe now is the time to start worrying about the wonders of the uh, the jet engine. Take a small break on top of this hill because obviously I do not want to be attacking during the middle of the night. Coming around a few of the lower hills, I uh, decide that I want to have a, a little bit of a heart attack and roll my hill, roll my vehicle down the hill here. Thankfully, the armor be strong. I didn't roll myself down all that hard, and I managed to get back onto my wheels without any serious problems. Still about 18 kilometers away, we have got hills to be climbing. Eight kilometers, sorry, it crept up quick on us. Look at that. Uh, I still don't know exactly over which hill is the, the the bad guys. Every time that I look up, it looks like we've got another ridge to have to deal with. Uh, so, you know, I, I just keep driving at this point. I'm like, okay, I'll get over this hill and then I'll see what the next hill brings. Uh, one thing that has just happened is I've had a small little explosion on the rear end. Not a big problem. I thought it was a problem when we first got here, but it turns out it was just my RTGs clipping on a ridge. And as the video slows down, we enter the zone of maximum heart rate. Yep, we are at the point where I can see them and they can see me. My major aim is just to roll forward, take a few tank shots at their weapons, at their weapons, ethical after all, uh, and then roll back. Uh, doesn't actually work out quite as well as I would have liked at this particular point. It turns out my uh, my angle of attack at the slope was quite uh, quite great, and as you can see, they are returning fire. I, I wasn't about that. I really was hoping that the fact that they couldn't look in my direction would save me, but uh, who, who knew one of them had a tank turret on top, which uh, I actually thought the fence was going to block. Uh, but anyway, I need to reposition myself to an area with slightly less incline on this side of the ridge and I see one of those just to my left over there. Unfortunately the tank attacks just not not taking it. I, I, I need to get up uh, using a little bit more power and thankfully my engine uh, which was put there for this specific purpose comes into play there. All right I feel like now maybe we've got a much better angle on the uh, the, the whole battlefield here. We should be able to roll forwards just uh, inching it forwards a little bit at a time. Obviously I want as little of my craft exposed as possible. All my guns are mounted up nice and high so that my control units and everything like that are not exposed. Uh, that was the theory anyway uh, and uh, whilst I have gone ahead and blown up some, some missiles EA, I've been missing the actual tank turret and, and that's, that's why I'm actually after here. Uh, I have been noticing that they, yes, got it, bam uh, I have been noticing that they've not really been able to, uh, to target me and now that I've actually taken out that tank turret, which I think was the only thing that could turn and fire in my direction. I should now be relatively safe. I'm a little bit worried about the uh, the missiles on the back of the other guy. Uh, that's why I am firing on my way down there. But I, I kind of feel like this this place is mine now. I, I have got a, a, an avenue of attack that just is not broachable. It turns out there's uh, no way. But um, can I blow up the building? This was not part of the plan. This is my base. I wanted to, to take it back. It does mean that the, the vehicle took a little bit more damage, take some d disintegration, but th that was... That was totally not part of the deal. I wanted to take two craft, strip them of all their weapons, and return them back. Uh, return them back with uh, with minimal casualties. Uh, but now, now that now that I've lost a building, uh, I, I I suppose we're just going to have to do the only ethical thing and um, make sure that these are not going to be used in the battle ever again. Uh, I I was. I was actually honestly planning to hand these back, but uh, so something happened when I rolled over and took a small amount of damage that was caused by myself, not even caused by these guys. Uh, the the red veil dropped over Camlin's eyes, and uh, she she just went rogue and started taking out anything that could be perceived as a threat, particularly uh, looking for the um, the probe cause. the The problem that I had uh, that was that I wanted to take out the cause and leave it as just a lump of debris. You, you know. What I'm saying and like if you if you took a normal rocket and you blow up the command capsule this perfectly functional rocket behind it would be classified as debris and that's kind of what I was going for there and it's what I'm going to go for again here trying to drill through the back piece of armor without blowing up the front unfortunately I then managed to rip it in half which uh 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling incredibly ethical at this point in time. Thankfully, the Joffrey's Legion don't use Kerbals. They seem to be a, a group of androids or something like that. Uh, I, I can only assume low-level, uh, unfeeling androids without any uh, emotional data routines. I mean, I wouldn't be up for attacking anything that could uh, consider consider what I've done a bad thing, obviously. that that's not I'm not a bad person. I wouldn't want the people that I am uh, dealing with to think that I'm a bad person. Anyway, we have a little bit of trouble with this slope here, and for some reason I, yet again, don't fire up my my jet engine. I'm not I'm not sure what what system I was using to turn on and off my, my jet engine. It was, just seemed to be when I remembered about it, but it was there the whole time. I saw it. But yeah, having a look at that vehicle ahead of me, it looks like uh, I did a lot more damage than I thought I did. I really was just trying to take out the uh, the probe core at the front. So that's uh, two for two on, on uh, over-destruction there. But uh, I think we can classify that as Green Peaks 1. And now for the final piece of military action for this episode. We have here the Manta, my heavy bomber slash missile platform. First off, big, big props to Brum, my top patron at the moment, for providing this wonderful wing pattern here. The moment he showed it to me on Discord, I was like, yes, I am going to use that. I made a little bit of a tweak to the central fuselage, just so that I could fit the weapons in there that I wanted to fit in. This flight isn't quite as simple as, it, as I want it to be. Uh, I am looking in the direction I want to be flying, but unfortunately I have a base in that direction you might have remembered earlier on we were having great difficulties trying to keep uh, defenses on top of buildings when they were being loaded so I don't want to go anywhere near my base and off to the left we have the Kerbin's Heart Research Center you can just see it over there on on my screen I want to make sure I don't get any closer than 50 ideally I would have liked to have not seen it at all but you know that that's where we are so that's working out quite well we are of course headed to Sea's Edge because whilst we have undone the wrongs that have happened to us we are down in the competition we have lost a plane and a, 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 a ground defense we had to commit a tank so uh, I feel like we to, to be even in this competition need to go and uh, try try and wear down a little bit of the defenses of Joffrey's Legion therefore I have flown this literally halfway across my country in fact all the way across my country from Goldpool down to Sea's Edge, but my base just on the left over there is Kraken's Bottom. I brought the footage down to a more reasonable pace as I'm about to perform some voodoo. I have a little box on the back of this aircraft, a box that will freeze me in the air. Why am I doing this? Well, as I said, we were having troubles keeping things loaded, uh, keeping buildings loaded, and it turns out that if you jump over to the vehicles before you get close enough, they will load the, the vehicle, the buildings, sorry, uh, so that we can avoid situations like uh, like this, the horrible watery mess that doesn't do anybody any good. The first time that I flew out there, I actually forgot that box and had to do the flight all over again. Ah, oh, it was uh, it was a horrific mess. I did all sorts to try and make it work, but it just wasn't up for it. Anyway, made sure that the uh, guard mode was turned on. Edgy seems to have a bit of a habit of not turning them on. At least that was what was going on at Green Peaks. Uh, just to say, I turned them on before I made the attack. Before anybody starts going on like that, I, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna let uh, a small small technicality like that get in the way of the actual fight but anyway with the base loaded we're going to start moving in you can already start to see the difference if you look off into the the distance over there you can actually see the uh, the forms of the building whereas we couldn't beforehand if you roll back the footage go have a look uh, that will both uh, improve my audience retention and also you guys get to see that uh, that that's where that is all right so i'm now going to pinpoint the location of edgy stuff uh we i know that there are two missile platforms and a tank these are the things that i've got to worry about and i i feel like i'm pretty safe at this point i am according to the range finder 25 kilometers out uh i and i'm just trying to gather targets I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble actually locking on if you have a look in the small small window down below it says no lr but uh, also in the small window down below we saw a missile flying at me uh, i thought we were far too far out of the way uh, i didn't think that we could actually be be spotted by them so i am I'm flying like a madman. You might notice that this doesn't have much your stability. Uh, it, it wasn't really designed to get into a combat situation. Uh, it, it's supposed to be a long distance 
long distance attack craft. But, you know, I suppose that makes me feel better about this attack because I was actually facing peril. I was a little bit worried when I was turning up that maybe the uh, the plan that I had would leave me facing absolutely zero peril and people would be like, well, that was just an unfair attack. But there we go. I've I've taken I've taken some uh, some flak, so, well, not actual flak, some missiles that I used for flak, uh, and I've picked up three targets three gps targets now why would i want gps targets well it's not just because i've got gps guarded bombs on the underside but no i also have a cargo bay i actually two and a half cargo bays cargo bay full of am i am i not going to show us i'm not going to show us full of cruise missiles that that was about the perfect opportunity for me to actually turn and fire there four cruise missiles three targets i feel like the first one is going to be the one that doesn't strike so i send a the last one also after that first target if you see what i go i go one two three one uh, i also then have a bunch of bombs but i feel like i'm all right at this point i'm gonna drop the bombs anyway and we're gonna watch those bombs go in i'm gonna fire up the uh the, the computer AI uh, and and watch a few of these things happen. Unfortunately, I spend a lot of time just kind of going through uh, through the camera and miss the actual hit. Also, when I then sweep back to my aircraft, I'm noticing that the pilot's not handling a uh, craft that doesn't have good yaw stability very well. So I take control back. I turn on my guard menu and take a couple of strafing runs with my 50 caliber turret. Um, but I noticed I'm not being fired at. I noticed that I'm not being shot at, so I, I set a cruise position. I have a quick search round all the targets. I go, mission achieved. There's not a single probe core or weapon left. Time to go home, right? Okay, so yes, time to go home. We're going to set a waypoint all on the other side and uh, reverse the, the journey that we just did. Nice and simple, uh, really nothing to, to worry about here. Uh, I think I might even, given how long this episode's been running, jump forward to the landing. Alright, we're coming in nice and low and slow. I've already done all the business of having to stop and reload and use the voodoo magic to make sure my, my craft appear. Could you imagine coming back and your craft falling through and hitting the floor. Oh, it would be horrible. Thankfully, my human predictive brain, for like the sixth time in my life ever, decided to come along and tell me that that was going to be a problem, so I made sure to uh, to, to reload my base and not come back to a, a whole a horrible smouldering pile of wreckage. But yeah, gold pool. My main staging area seems to be where everything is. Beautiful, beautiful touchdown. I think that counts as a beautiful mission done. War. War is not pretty. War is not cheap. Help support the cause. Donate on Patreon today. And that's my first actual turn of Kerbal Combat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any uh, advice, tips or tricks, do let me know. I've gone through the majority of the different vehicle types in the past two episodes so that we can uh, get a full idea of what is available to us. Uh, we've got ground attack, ground defense, uh, light and heavy aircraft, light and heavy uh, boats. So that should now be the full exposure for you guys of what we've got. Uh, I hope you really did enjoy this. I will see you guys next time we're going to continue our offensive it's a little bit of a shame that we couldn't pick up sea's edge but uh yeah lack of material has kind of held us back but i'll see you then when we're gonna do that bye